Now, do you notice all these head about the Evolution X ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro? It just goes on and on with every update video I do on the Evolution X ROM. Again, there are suggestions like these. Of course, all ROMs are different and they are supposed to have different things, I know. But today, I will show you a ROM mentioned in this particular comment and I will show you how is this ROM if you can enjoy this ROM particularly over Evolution XS features. Today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of the Pixis OS version 5.1.2 based on Android 12.1 on the Redmi K20 Pro. One thing I gotta give it to them that the reboot time over here is really really fast. And of course it comes with two separate versions, one includes the GApps and one does not. And this is based on A11 or Android 11 firmware. And if you have no idea how to flash ROM on your Redmi K20 Pro, you can check out the cards or the description. Now this is the 6th May 2022 build of the Pixis OS right here. In the about section, looks pretty cool. We have the Pixis OS logo right on top and we have the Pixis OS version. And as you can see, the version is mentioned over there again. And the build date, it says official build. Also, this is the GApps included build, so that's mentioned. And we do have the Android version as Android 12 showing up, but this is actually Android 12.1. We have the security patch of latest May 5th, 2022. Again, great things. We have the build date here mentioned as 6th May, 2022. And we have the Soviet star kernel by default. And the Linux status shows as enforcing. In the system panel, this is how it looks like. And we do have these gestures over here. We have the quickly open camera, then we have the system nav gestures. In the settings, we have the gesture bar length customization. That's great. You can also hide the gesture bar if you don't like that. Swipe to invoke assistant is there. And yes, it shows assistant can't start when another app is in use. I'm not really sure which app is using that. But yes, assistant should be working fine here. Two button, three button navigations are working fine again. And if you scroll down more, we have the press and hold power button and hold for assistant is there. The one handed mode works perfectly fine. And we have the swipe trick screenshot. And once you take a screenshot, this is how it works. We have the edit and share option, but to delete it, you have to go into the edit, then delete this particular screenshot. We have the power menu option, then there you get the advanced reboot. And let me show you in the power menu, this is how it looks like. We do have this advanced option and you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. And we have the live translate, then we have the Gboard as a default keyboard. We also get a system updater and from here you can check for updates. This updater definitely looks cool in my opinion. And of course you can donate to the developers to support the team of Pixis OS. And the build maintainer's name is Aviram, so huge thanks to him for this amazing ROM. Inside status bar tuner, we have the headset, Bluetooth headset icons and Vaulty again should be working fine, but I don't have a SIM card in the device right now. So yes, with a Vaulty SIM, the Vaulty calling and stuff should be working great here. Also, it has the call recording option, I think. So yeah, you should be fine. And the battery percentage, you can enable it from right here. You just click on this battery and just, okay. So for some reason, I'm clicking on it. It's not showing up anything. When I double tap, it's selecting something. All right, so right now it's working and we have the time. You can change that, I think. So yeah, it's a little weird, but yes, it works. Right now, let me go home and show you the home screen. And this is how the home screen looks like. To the left of the home screen, we have the Google's Discover page, so that's great. And swiping down gets you to the quick setting panel. And definitely, I like this one because the quick setting panel right now is white in the light theme and that you do not get in Evolution X. So that's a plus. That's really one thing that I like about this ROM, that the quick setting panel in the light theme stays white. And once you switch to the dark theme, as you are noticing, the quick setting panel turns totally dark. It's pitch black. So I definitely like this feature. We have the night light, the hotspot, the flashlight, always on display toggle, the screen recorder, and everywhere you have the Android 12 L kind of animations. If you are wondering about those, and as you are noticing, all the animations are working super smooth. The heads up, you can disable or enable the battery saver is there. The do not disturb data saver, and we get the Google Home controls. Now you can edit and add even more toggles if you want. And you have this recorder option and stuff. Now, one thing that you may not get over here is the FPS counter. So the FPS info or something like that does not show up over here in the quick toggles at least. In this particular ROM, there is no double tap to sleep at all. In the home screen, you don't get that. In the status bar, you don't get that. So that's why I had to install this particular app. This is from a screen lock app and this is a widget. I will definitely link it in the description if you want it. But this is the widget that I had to use to lock the device because I don't want to use the power button all the time. For some reason, 
the quick setting panel is stuck right now not really sure why okay so it did work right now okay so sometimes the quick setting panel is getting stuck not really sure why but yeah and with the help of this widget i can lock the screen right away and once i tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks but yes it's not the fastest that i have seen but yes it unlocks fine no complaints whatsoever as you are noticing it unlocks super fine but then again you won't get any kind of fingerprint scanner customization and this is the animation that you will get over here So yes, looks beautiful, it unlocks fine and the widgets of like the Google clock and stuff, everything is working perfectly fine and the animations of Android 12 well again is working fine. Now talking about the stock camera, you get this kind of stock camera over here. This is kind of looking like a G cam but this may be a different camera, I'm not really aware of that but yes, you do have this 4K video shooting option with the rear camera but of course you can't really switch the lenses with this camera but yes that's fine. We get a decent like anything is better than the old kind of google camera that we get in evolution x so yes another pro is that we get this camera and yes you can take basic pictures and the shutter speed is fine no issues whatsoever with the pictures and you can actually take like good quality pictures i would say with this one no issues with this camera and if i even if you want to take a selfie or something as you're noticing this is how the selfie looks like now you can have these kind of settings if you're noticing, we can change the aspect ratio, I guess. Then we have the grid option, the torch option, the location option, and the camera sounds. You can disable. So yes, you get like decent amount of customizations in terms of the stock camera here. Now let's jump into the settings. And here we have the network settings on top and we get the traffic indicators too. So you can enable those if you want to. Now inside connected apps, of course, you can see we have the Bluetooth device and stuff and the Bluetooth battery status actually shows up in the status bar. Also in the quick setting panel, you can see the Bluetooth battery percentage. So that's great. And in the settings, if your headset does support a separate codec like the Qualcomm Aptix HD audio or something, it should be fine. But this one supports AAC. So yeah, HD AAC is fine working. And in the notifications, we have these kind of settings. You have the Sainer heads up then the notification headers. Then we get the allow notifications snoozing and stuff. Let me go back, we have the battery settings and this is how the battery settings looks like. Now, do you remember the Evolution X's battery settings? I'm just saying because like a lot of people say these ROMs are better, but for me personally, I don't find it better because the battery settings is very much vanilla. You don't even get to see the battery temperature over here. In Evolution X, you get to see the battery temperature, the charging cycle and a lot more stuff. We have the battery usage over here, battery manager, battery percentage enabling option and the battery estimates. That's it. And here, let me actually talk about the battery life. Here, the battery life is really good. I'm getting about 6 hours and 15 minutes of screen on time. So yes, decent amount of screen on time that I'm getting. No issues whatsoever with the battery life. And yes, it does support fast charging too. No issues with that. In the health, the battery health is showing really, really low for me. Over here, I have about 53%, I think. In Evolution X, it shows about 60 to 70% as far as I remember. But yes, 53% battery health for some reason it's showing. But yeah, that's how it is. In the theme section, we have this use black theme. Now here we can actually disable that. And if you like grayish background for the dark theme, you can definitely go with that. But of course, pitch black or amulet black is there. That's just awesome. We have the use custom color option, white luminance changing option, the chroma factor, use linear lightness settings. So yes, all the monet theme engine kind of customization you can do from right here. In the sound settings, we have the media call, etc. volume. And this is how the volume panel looks like over here. I expand the volume panel just like this. Let me scroll down. We have the left volume panel over here. So if I enable that, as you can see, the volume panel appears from the left side. So that's great. We have the adaptive sound and the vibrator intensity. You can customize that for notification ring or haptic feedback. Good enough. We have the dial pad tones, the screen locking sound, touch vibration, etc. And we have the in-call vibration options, vibrate on connect, call waiting and disconnect. And we have the blink flashlight for incoming call. And we have the screenshot sound disabling option. Let me go back to the display settings. Now here we have the adaptive brightness, the extra dim and lock screen and stuff is there. And we have the dark theme, the headline and body fonts customization. You get these many font options. Then we have these many icon packs, the DPI you can customize. The colors I have changed it to boosted. Also, you can customize the RGB over here. The pocket detection is there. The double tap to wake is there. But then again, let me remind you, there is no double tap to sleep in this UI. We have the show brightness slider option, then the adaptive brightness button and show brightness slider on the bottom option. 
Now here you might be noticing one thing, there is no DC dimming option. So if you're someone who wants DC dimming, yes, that's just not there. But yes, we do get this extra dim feature of Android 12 L. Let me go back. We have the wallpaper and styles. By the way, in the home screen, you can go into the wallpaper and styles too. This is how it looks like. And all the wallpapers you can choose from right here. You can just click on this wallpaper and styles and the same settings appear. We have the themed icons and the wallpaper colors. Of course, you can go with the basic colors too if you want. And then we have the app grid up to five by five. And let me show you the widget section from here. And of course, you can add whatever widget that you want to add. We get the new Android 12 L kind of clock widgets. Now let's jump into the security, shall we? We have the face unlock and the fingerprint scanner both. Let me just set up the face unlock. And once I'm done with that, we can actually change it to when swiping up on lock screen. Right now, let me actually try the face unlock. And here I double tap and I swipe up and point the device towards my face. And as you can see, it unlocks. Let me try one more time. I double tap to wake and swipe up. So yes, the face unlock is working decently and it's not a problem at all. So that definitely gets a thumbs up from me and in the settings, we don't get any quick unlock, but that's fine. But there is no app lock over here. So if you're looking for that, by default, you do not get any kind of app lock feature on this particular ROM. And of course, no customizations over here. Like there is no sliding a finger on the status bar to actually adjust the brightness or stuff like that. There is no double tap to sleep. Even the other like huge amount of customization that you get on ROMs like Evolution X, you don't simply get those over here. So it's basically a very vanilla stock Android is experience. If you like that, definitely you can go for that. But I think at least they should have provided the double tap to sleep over here, at least on the status bar. Let me in the comments, what do you guys think? In terms of the DRM info, yes, the DRM info stays as L1. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p, that should not be an issue. The safety net passes right out of the box, so you can use banking apps over here without any problems. Talking about the overall performance, it's great. It's a great performer everywhere. And here I have seen like no issues whatsoever. And this is how the recent panel looks like. You can go all the way to the left to clear all the apps from right here. And let me actually show you, you can enable the split top feature and that is actually working perfectly fine. If you're noticing, I can just go like this and the split top is working perfectly fine. And as you are noticing, I can switch between apps just like this and both of the apps stays in the recent panel. I can go into that whenever I want to. And of course you can reskill them if you want to. So your split top is not a problem on this particular ROM. And here are the Android 20 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. So let me in the comments, what do you guys think about the Pixis OS based on Android 12 L? Do you think you will prefer this one over Evolution X? For me personally, if you ask me, no, I cannot simply prefer this one on top of Evolution X because this simply does not have the basic features that I need for daily driving. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.